The Mariners have traded Paul Seawald to the Arizona Diamondbacks. Our thoughts on the deal coming up. Colby, hit it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ahoy, sailors. It is Monday, July 31st, 2023. This is Tidy Gonzalez and Colby Patnoed for the Locked On Mariners podcast. Thank you so much for making us your first listen after the Paul Seawald trade. Subscribe, like, and turn on alerts if you're watching on YouTube, or subscribe and leave a five-star review on your preferred podcast platform if you like what you hear. And if you're part of the crew and rock with us every single day, let us know in the comments below. And if you want to hear from us even more, please consider signing up for our Patreon. You can now get a free seven-day trial to check out the show. The link, as well as our social accounts, is in the description of this episode all right chills jerry depoto has made a trade he's actually made two trades but we're mostly going to focus on the first trade he made because the for second now. one for now we'll we'll see we'll we'll see the, the second saying, one could get very unhinged does um, jerry have a history of fleecing the san francisco giants <laughs> but for, for now for now for now we're going to talk about the deal that the mariners made with the arizona diamondbacks uh paul seawald is heading to arizona for a package of three players including dominic canzone josh rojas and middle infield prospect ryan bliss uh sorry that um we're a little late on getting this out. I had to do an interview with Locked On, which is actually now on our channel. I'm sure some of you have already watched that. If not, go watch that. That's my actual first reaction to the deal over there. Uh, and uh, we also uh, got into recording and then, then had lag. So we're, we're a little delayed. But uh, all right, let's get into this deal. Uh, Colby, uh, just overall first reaction to this trade for the Mariners. <sighs> Uh, first reaction is, is I'm, I'm really going to miss Paul. Uh, he was, yeah. uh, just a fantastic dude. Can who, we get some CS walds in the chat in, yeah, the, in the comments you know I mean? below for Paul Seawald? Yeah. Yeah. He's just a, he's a fantastic dude, um, with a great family who really, um, you know, kind of put down roots here in Seattle after the Mariners were the team that gave him the chance. And then, uh, he always seemed incredibly grateful to them for giving him that opportunity. And, and, uh, you know, changing his life in a lot of ways. And and so Paul returned the favor by being one of the best damn relief pitchers in, in the American league for the last two plus years. So, oh, yeah. um, you know, I, I think initial thoughts and, and we'll get to the players the Mariners got back and, and it's certainly an interesting deal. Um, but I think, you know, initial thoughts are you just, you're a little, you're a little bummed for Paul and his family um, because getting traded in the middle of the year is, is hard. You know, none of us know what that's like, but it, it can't be easy. So, you know, I, I think, you know, first, first thought is, you know, I'm, I'm sad that Paul's not a Mariner. Um, I hope he gets to, you know, pitch in the playoffs. I hope that he has tremendous success, but uh, yeah, you know, it's, I think if your first reaction isn't to be bummed about this, I, I don't know, man, like you, you, you probably need, need a little bit of a, a reality check because Paul's a great dude and mm -hmm. the Mariners today aren't as good as they were with Paul Seawald that could change, yes. but just right off the top, that's what I'm thinking about right now is just that, you know, Hey, it, it's just a bummer that we're not going to get to watch Paul Seawald pitch again. Uh, you know, at least this year for the Mariners and, uh, I wish him a lot of luck. So it's, it's absolutely that's, that's where my mind goes first. And the second place is, is, you know, how does the clubhouse react to this? Uh, and we've already yeah. gotten some reports that it's a really quiet clubhouse and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. yeah. Um, honestly, first thoughts weren't really on about what this does for the Mariners on the baseball field. Um, but, uh, right. that's just kind of the impact Paul had over the last, uh, two plus years with this ball club. I yeah. wish him We're the best of luck. Words truly can't express my appreciation for, uh, for Paul Seawald and, uh, his story mm -hmm. and for what he, uh, did for, um, the city and this franchise. Um, I'm so proud that we were able to to watch Paul Seawald pitch for our favorite baseball team for the last three years. I'm pretty honored by that. Uh, he's a hell of a dude, hell of a pitcher. And I mean, that's perfectly exemplified by what he did here in his last stint with the Mariners just recently. Took the ball, you know, five out of six games um, consecutively and didn't complain. 
uh, pitched his heart out um, and and stepped up when the team needed him to. So, uh, yeah, you know, best of luck to him in Arizona. But it's a it's a huge bummer losing him uh, today. Uh, but it's also something that you know we have talked about a lot, and something that you know I. I I thought it could have happened even if they were strictly buying and, and really, I don't know if they're selling or buying or doing both right now. I don't think this necessarily give us, gives us a clear indication of what their plan is just yet. Now, look, I know this is going to fall on a lot of deaf ears by me saying this, I'm playing a losing game by saying this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Let's hold out on making any conclusions, what the Mariners are doing at the deadline until the deadline actually passes because they very well may have another deal here lined up for a seawall replacement they still might go get their number five starter that they most likely need they still might add another outfielder or another infielder what have you still a lot of time to do stuff and the market is starting to get going now john uh, candelario just went off the board marcana just went off the board um AJ we're starting Pollock to just went off the board <laughs> aj pollock and mark matthias just went off the board yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so <laughs> i still can't believe that's happened we're, we're still waiting on what the return is on that if anything that just has to be cash doesn't even matter really it has to be cash though right it literally could not be a player right the giants are not dumb enough to actually give the Mariners I, a player for those guys right so I, I kind of threw this at you real fast here, and I don't want to get sidetracked here, but I think yeah. Joey Bart actually makes some sense. Wait, really? Um, <laughs> I, I do. By all accounts, the Giants they are just done with Joey Bart. They he's ticked off their player development staff. He's doing things that they don't want him to do. So you know, maybe change the scenery guy. And if all that costs you is is you know AJ Pollock and Mark Mathias, then like fine. But we'll see. All uh, right, Let, let's not get super unhinged here. We'll 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 talk maybe more about that a little later on in the show. But for now. Yeah. Um, just overall thoughts on the package on the return uh, in a vacuum. I think it's a pretty good return for Paul Seawald for a year and a half of Paul Seawald, who's not a household name, but one of the better relievers in, in Major League Baseball. Um, you know, you see what these relievers are getting, right? And it's hard not to wonder if you're Jerry Depoto and Justin Hollander, what could I get for Paul Seawald? Um, and I, I thought they 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 did a pretty good job here, right? Like there isn't um. A huge headliner here but you got two major league bats two guys that are going to go on your major league roster tomorrow as soon as they get to seattle and another mm-hmm. guy who's pretty much on the doorstep in, in ryan bliss and could be an option for you at, at second base in the future uh, in the not so distant future too so uh, i think that's a, a nice deal on the surface uh but again i i think the 2023 mariners pretty clearly got worse today and i don't think there's really any debating that Unless Canzone just hits out of his mind from here on out and, and Rojas turns things around. Now, Rojas has been a, a 100 plus WRC plus guy the last two years. This year, though, he's been banged up and he's really struggled. I think he has like a 61 WRC plus or something like that. So that's not anything to get excited about. And I totally understand why, you know, most Mariners fans are going to look at the seal and they're going to look up the players that they got and not be impressed whatsoever and, and frankly be pissed off by it. I don't think that this deal necessarily warrants that kind of reaction, at least not yet. Again, let's see, you know, what the Mariners do the rest of the way here. Uh, but I think overall, again, in a vacuum, I think they did pretty well for themselves in terms of just what Paul Seawald can get you. Yeah, they, they made a deal that is in line with what a seller's market should look like, and and they've got. Um, again, we'll we'll break down each guy a little individually here in just a couple minutes, but. Uh, I, I don't think they got any stars out of this deal, and, and that's fine. But I do think they've got at least at least two good major leaguers, solid major leaguers, and probably a pretty good one. Um, but we'll talk about that in a minute. But overall, in 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 the vacuum, I, I think they did totally fine in the context of 2023 and what this says to your clubhouse and what this says to your fan base. Yeah, it's a risk. It's a big risk, just like trading yeah. Kendall Graveman was back in the day. That one worked. Will this one? We'll see. But uh, in a vacuum, they did totally fine. They did better in this one than they did in the Graveman one. Yeah. In, you know, in a vacuum. But right. we'll see. Why couldn't you have just made this deal yesterday, though? <laughs> I know. You could have had those guys up with you right now. Yeah. And you, would, you wouldn't you would have a, a light bullpen heading into the series against the Red Sox, which is a pretty pivotal series. Crucial series. Crucial series. 
Yeah. Which, by the way, you can catch on the Mariners Hometown Broadcast with SiriusXM via the YesXM app. All right. Let's talk about Canzone and Bliss and Rojas and uh, what they bring to the table for the Mariners in just a moment. But first, a reminder, this episode of the Locked On Mariners podcast is brought to you by FanDuel. Take your first swing at betting on Major League Baseball on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets. That's up to $200. That's right. Just bet 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's $200. You can spend betting on everything from the money line to the over under to who you think is going to hit the first home run all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus when you win, you can get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on major league baseball than FanDuel America's number one sports book. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash L O C K E D O N. That's locked on FanDuel official partner of major league baseball and you're listening to the locked on mariners podcast thank you again for making us your first listen after the paul seawald trade and i i guess the aj pollock and mark matthias trade as well you can catch the uh, mariners and the red sox that's right the mariners are still playing a baseball game tonight uh tonight on the uh, mariners hometown broadcast with sirius xm via the sxm app all right so I don't know if there's necessarily a headliner in the steel. Maybe it's Canzone. Let's start with Canzone because he's, to me, the most recognizable name of the three. Maybe it's Josh Rojas, but Canzone's a, a legit prospect. He's crushed every level of the minor leagues. Uh, he's had a cup of coffee at the major league level so far, just 15 games. Hasn't been great. Did have a decent series against the Mariners, though, this past weekend. Uh, 79 WRC plus through the first uh, 15 games of his major league career. Uh, but he's a guy that Left-handed hitter, has some pop, might be a good fit for T-Mobile Park, doesn't strike out a ton, walks a little bit, gets on base. I mean, I think he posted like a 431 on base percentage in AAA this year. Um, there's some pretty interesting tools here with, with Canzone. So what do you think about him first? Yeah, he's he's a bat first guy. He's going to be 26 in a couple of weeks, so he's an older prospect, older rookie prospect. Um, you know, it's a lefty swing that fits pretty well in, in T-Mobile park power is not really an issue for him. Uh, and it's, it's a pretty advanced hit tool. He'll, he'll take his walks. Uh, he'll avoid strikeouts at a good rate. Um, but he's not, he's not a very good athlete. You know, he's, he's at best a fringe left fielder and he's probably better suited for first base. Um, overall he's, he's a, on the shorter side in terms, I mean, in terms of like a professional athlete, <laughs> like he's six foot, you know, he's buck 90. Like he's not a big guy. You saw him this weekend. If you were watching, mm-hmm. um, again, not, not a tremendous athlete probably belongs at first base DH, but you can make it work in the outfield for, you know, a couple of days a week. Um, it's, it's kind of, honestly, it's, it's kind of similar to like a less athletic Cade Marlowe, like that type of profile might just be a fourth outfielder, but there's a chance the bat is good enough with enough power that he can be a legit everyday first baseman, um, which, you know, with the latest rumors of Ty France, you know, possibly being on the trade block could make some sense for Seattle. So uh, Canzone is a guy who's probably going to hit, uh, you know, a fair amount, at least a league average bat. Uh, and then we'll see what they can do defensively with him. But yeah, he's, he's a solid player. Um, I think he'd probably be top, top 15, I think in, in the oh. Mariner system would be my guess. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's, it's a legit bad. And, and like I said, he's, he's just less athletic Cade Marlowe, I think in terms of a prospect pro- profile, but with a better track record of hitting at the minor league and at the high minors. Yeah. There's some upside here with yep, the bat. Yep. And mm-hmm. again, you know, talking about bats, we've, we've talked about this in the weeks leading up to the deadline, like the Mariners need some left-handed bats who actually play up well in, in T-Mobile park where their power might play up a bit in, in T-Mobile yep. park. And, and Canzone seems like one of those guys. So, um, or at least he fits that idea. So we'll, we'll see how it goes, but I'm I'm intrigued by him for sure. Uh, Josh Rojas is the other guy that they've gotten, and he's been in the majors for a few years now. He, again, like I said earlier, has posted a WRC plus above 100 the last two years, but this year it's been a real struggle for him. He's also been hurt. Uh, he pretty much missed all of June uh, due to an injury. I I, uh, I looked up what the injury was and now I, I can't remember what the injury was i'll let you know in a moment here but uh <laughs> but while i do that colby tell us about josh rojas yeah uh baseball's life but uh josh, baseball is josh, life that's right yes that's our new thing 
That's how yeah, we, if we you don't think we're going to, we're, we're not going to start that. You would be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's made today somewhat palatable for us, but uh, yeah. you know, Rojas is actually would be, if, if Rojas was having the same year he was in 2021 and 2022, you couldn't get him for Paul Seawald. Uh, Rojas is a utility infielder better at third, but can play second. He's at least as good as Colton Wong, probably a tick better uh, there. And he is a guy who the last two years was a 100 plus WRC plus guy. Uh, he's got some pop. Uh, he's good on base percentages, you know, pretty good average. Like he's not an amazing player, but he is, he has been at least over, you know, two of the last three years, a legitimate kind of everyday utility type that you can kind of move around the infield a little bit. Um, and yeah, I, I think, you know, the Mariners feeling is, is that if we can get him back to 2022 levels for even a month, uh, we're pretty much going to break even on the seawall front, uh, in terms of just value. And then Rojas mm-hmm. has four years of club control. He's a super two this year. So you're already paying him arbitration arb two next year. Um, but he does give you legitimate depth, uh, kind of as a utility guy, he gives you an option at third. If maybe you want to move on from Chino gives you an option at second. And maybe you, you know, it, it's just a shallow market. We know that. So plenty of club control with him. He actually has two options left too. So there's a lot of things they could do with Rojas, pretty good base runner. He's an interesting player. He really is. If, if he was hitting like he did the last two years, he's not in this trade. So the fact that you get him and you have a shot to kind of work him back. And even as bad as he's been this year, he's still like 20% better than Colton Wong uh, offensively. Right. So Rojas going to get a lot of time at second base uh, and he is a lefty. So it is kind of a natural platoon there with Caballero or more. So I, I, I do think Rojas is probably the most interesting part of this deal. And I think people just look at the numbers this year and they say, this guy can't play blah, blah, blah. But yeah, I just saw a couple of comments on our, uh, on the video that I did with Kanani Stevens for locked on uh, where people are like, Rojas isn't a major league bat because I obviously referred to him as a major league bat, which he is. He is a major league bat. Just having a bad year this year, but last few years have been really good. And yeah. uh, again, he's been dealing with some injuries. So the injury that he landed on the IL with most recently, lumbar inflammation, lumbar spine, lumbar spine inflammation. Yes. Uh, so he missed half of June and pretty much all of this month. He made his return from the IL during the Mariners diamondback series um yeah. so yeah you're getting a uh, rojas who's coming back to health to full health now uh, to full strength and uh yeah we'll see we'll see what you can get out of him but like you said he's probably going to play a good deal second base i also kind of wonder if this means colt wong's getting dfa'd probably probably tomorrow because that seems redundant him yeah. and rojas on the same roster together yeah, because Canzone is going to take uh, Trammell's spot. Yeah. And so, yeah, yeah uh, there's no point in having more uh, Wong, Rojas, and Caballero on the roster at the same time. They all kind of do the same thing. Right, right. You're listening to the Locked On Mariners podcast. Thank you again for making us your first listen after the Paul Seawald trade. Again, you can catch the Red Sox on the Mariners tonight on the Mariners' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM via the SXM app. Mariners' roster going to be a little light tonight. Well, bullpen will be a little light without Paul Seawall tonight. Uh, Don't worry. They called up 110. It's going to be fine. Oh, nice, nice. Uh, So uh, the last player the Mariners got in return for Seawald is uh, middle infield prospect Ryan Bliss, who's had a really nice year in AA. Uh, He most recently got promoted to AAA, little bit of a struggle for him so far in that stint just 47 wrc plus i don't know how many games it's been it's only been a few though for for bliss at the triple a level uh but uh, this is a guy that joe doyle friend of the show really really likes um what have you learned about bliss so far or were you aware of him before the trade uh what do you got for me on him yeah so uh first and foremost the return on the uh, Pollock deal is in. It is apparently a player to be named later. So, wow. There you go. So they got something. Who, who, was, their, might, who was their might first round? Who was their first yeah, round? Pick? No, it's not going to be their first round pick. I think it was uh, McGonagall, I think. Uh, no, McGonagall went to the Tigers. Well, whatever. Either way. Whatever. Uh, yeah, Bliss is, Bliss is interesting. He, I think that the Mariners probably view Bliss as the, the headliner of this package. He is a... Okay. 
he is a small dude. Like he is five foot six. He's like a buck 65. Dude's got some bat speed. He's got some power though. Um, you know, he put up, he's put up some big numbers this year. I think people right away, they look and they say, Oh, well, at PCL, of course he put up big numbers. No, he did most of this damage in double a just got to the PCL. Uh, and he is a second base shortstop, probably better at second, but can fake it at short. Not bad there at all. Uh, he's got good bat speed, tremendous raw power for his size. Um, and he steals bags, 35, uh, stolen bases this year already. Uh, he is producing, uh, it's, it's, it's a really good fit. And there's a chance that this guy is, you know, a second baseman for you next year. And, and yep. I would say it's unlikely we see him at the big leagues this year, but it's not out of the question. He is at triple a, he has produced, um, but he's just kind of a fun player because it's an explosive swing in a really small package. Um, and you know, bliss shouldn't have any issues staying up the middle. He's a great athlete. Um, so I, I think that the Mariners probably view, uh, bliss as the highest upside guy in this deal. Sure. Uh, and, and therefore maybe they view him as kind of the, uh, the headliner. Although this deal was more about, I don't want to say it's more about bulk than upside, but you know, it's three probable major leaguers mm -hmm. uh, instead of like one a ball high upside. Yeah. You know, could and be guys a, that are either already in the league or they're pretty close. Cause like if yeah. bliss doesn't make his debut this year, it's probably going to be year. pretty early on next year. Right. Um, and it's worth noting that you don't have to put bliss on the 20, on the 40 man until the winter of 2025. Right. So right. lots of club control, uh, lots of options. Yeah. Uh, with how you maneuver with all three of these guys. So, yeah, you got a lot of club control for one and a half years of Paul Seawald. Not so, even one and a third. Not, yeah, one and a third. Sure. One, I, always, one, I always say one and a half. It's I easier know. to say one and a half. Yeah. <laughs> 1.3 years sure. of club control got you four for Rojas with two options, hmm. six for Canzone, six plus whatever's left this year of Canzone with three options left. And then Bliss has you know seven essentially full years uh if you service time him so yeah you got what is that tw uh 18 years of club control for three probable major leaguers like three solid major leaguers out of paul stewald it's annoying because the deal makes total sense on paper um but it's still uh not what you want to see uh it's still not something that I, that i love even though i do think that the trade package is pretty darn interesting and and I would say acceptable in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to hold out on like asking about a grade and all this stuff until sure. we get full context of the, of the rest of the deadline for the mayor. So that's something we'll either do tomorrow or, uh, or Wednesday. And, and probably just for you guys, um, we're probably going to wait until after the deadline to do tomorrow's show. So tomorrow's show is going to come out a little later than, uh, than usual. Uh, unless there's another, you know, trade that happens and we'll, we'll do another emergency pod. Uh, also for those of you that are subscribed to our Patreon, uh, we are going to post uh, CTZ Mondays tomorrow. We were actually in the process. We had just started recording CTZ Mondays, like probably nine minutes or so in, and then we saw the, the Seawald news break. So uh, we decided to uh, put a pause on that and, uh, record this and all the other stuff that, uh, we've had to do, uh, for this trade. So yeah so uh we'll, we'll dive more into uh into the deal and and what it all means um tomorrow but um let's just talk about what's next for the rest of the show we got a few minutes left here that we can use up so what do you think the mariners are going to do now after the seawall deal because i don't think they're just going to do this and call it good even if they are selling I think they're probably like if they are selling. I think they they're still going to make at least one or two more moves, uh, selling yep. some pieces off. So, uh, yeah. What what would you if you had to put money on it? What would you guess they're going to do next? Like, what would I like them to do next, or like, uh, both? What 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 should they do, and what do you think they will do? I think the correct strategy here is to trade Tay Oscar or Ty France for a reliever. Mm -hmm. um, preferably one who can pitch at the big league level right now, um, which, you know, might be a little difficult because surprise, it turns out the rental bat market, not booming. It's not going to cost you, you know, Cole young to go get two months of Tommy fam. Who would have ever guessed that anyways, they should go get a Tommy fam. They should, they should go get a rental bat or whatever. And they should use, they should trade Teoscar to get the reliever. That's what I, I think you trade 
let's say you trade Teo for, I don't know, a Justin Topa type, right? Like sure. somebody like that, that you've identified that you think you can help. Uh, and then you go and you flip, I mean, Alberto Rodriguez for Tommy Pham. Now you've replaced Seawald, right, with a reliever that you like. Mm-hmm. You've replaced Teoscar with Pham and Canzone. You've upgraded second base, at least in theory, with Rojas. And you've added a really interesting, Bliss is probably a top 12 prospect, I think, for me. In this yeah. mar- in a good Mariner system, so um, that's a deadline, and that you could sell that as we actually got better. And and I think if they did that, they would, I would buy it. They did get better, mm-hmm. both in the short term and the long term, and that's a tough needle to thread. What do I think they're going to do? I think they're going to trade Teo for, you know, basically what Canna got, basically what, um, you know, what uh, I mean, it, it'd be great if they could get what Candelario got, even though that didn't cost much either, but. Uh, I think they're just going to maybe trade a, a side piece here like, like tail. But uh, one thing I would, I would keep an eye on. Uh, I would keep an eye on, on trading to Thai France. Uh, I do think that's, uh, there's a shot. I wouldn't say it's good, but I, it's enough that you should monitor. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think that what I would do is I would continue that. I would sideways deal with tail buying deal for an outfielder to replace him. And then you just kind of roll with that because again, Canzone and Rojas do have the opportunity to upgrade your lineup. And then if you replace tail for, with like fam, that's kind of a lateral move, right? Like that's rough. It's you're a little bit better statistically, but you want to call it lateral fine. Sure. Um, so yeah, I think that's the move. Uh, what do I think they do? I think, I think the odds that they have like a big like buying move in them where they go get a, a multi-year bat. I don't want to say they're zero, but they're not particularly high. I think that's like a 10% shot. I think that sure. they're probably just going to trade Tay Oscar. And then I think we'll hear that like, oh, you know, they listened on France and they listened on Gino and they listened on, um, you know, they listened on uh, their starters, but ultimately they just decided not to. Um and then I, I would really like to go get a rich hill type at the very least, but uh, we'll see what they do. But there is definitely a path that's not even a far fetched one where we yeah. look at this deadline in 24 hours and we go, you know what? I get it. I think they did. I think they did well. I think they walked that fine line pretty well, but they have to get to work. Yeah. Um, if that is all they do, if all they do is sell, if they just sell Teo and, and that's it, um, it's pretty disappointing. It's pretty disappointing that they are essentially giving up on this team. Um, and I mean, you know, I'm going to keep an open mind. Maybe, you know, Dominic Canzone really hits and Josh Rojas turns things around, you know, whatever. They get some unexpected contributions from from places, but and still make a run towards the towards the postseason. But you, you didn't do anything to really help your your odds there on paper. As of now, the the process here is is saying that you're more focused on future years than than 2023. That you you don't really care what happens the rest of the way here in 2023. Like you're you're fine with things kind of falling apart if that's what happens. Yeah, it's essentially what the steel says. Uh, but again, there's there's things that they can still pull off. Uh, that that changes my opinion on that. Um, and yeah, if uh, if they are going to go out and buy some things here in the next 23 hours now, um, number five starter another outfielder um you know preferably i'd rather just keep teo than than trade him for because i don't i don't think that you're going to get a whole lot for teo especially after seeing some of these deals so i'd rather just keep teo for the half year and slap the qualifying offer on him or maybe even uh, i don't know i don't know what you want to do with him at this point but uh because he's been bad especially as of late but still there's obviously you know track record and all that there um and then you know maybe uh another infielder but I, I think you're pretty much set there with uh with rojas especially because you're you're probably dfa and colton wong like we talked about earlier so yep. outfielder number five starter maybe uh, uh well <laughs> they really do need to go out and try and get a, a seawall replacement or someone that's at least as good as you know justin topa um but it's also going to be expensive to to get because I mean, look at the prices that Jordan Hicks and Paul Seawall just went for. So I don't know if that's really 
going to be something that you're capable of doing without spending uh spending kind of big on that so i don't know it's it's complicated man but right now all signs kind of point to uh to them more or less just selling but would love to be proven wrong uh if not though we're gonna we're gonna have to have a, a an uncomfortable discussion on tomorrow's episode of lockdown mirror so we'll see uh they got 23 hours to to change my mind but uh so far i am whelmed i am yep yeah not 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 thrilled not thrilled but uh again in a vacuum i like the steel just as far as 2023 goes not a, not a fan not a fan at all and i think that they're right now punting on a on a pretty good opportunity for them to uh mm-hmm. to still make something out of this year but uh you know we'll see we'll see all right anything else you want to add before uh, we get out of here just that the rental market on bats is not expensive we keep on it hearing really oh it's yeah. Oh man, there's so few teams that are selling bats. They really like they're going to get so much, and they they're not. Candelario is the best rental that's going to get moved. He went for a couple middling prospects from a like mediocre farm system. Don't tell me you can't afford to go get Tommy Pham. Don't tell me you can't afford to go get you know player X Y Z. Like you can, you absolutely can, and it's yeah. a way you could show this clubhouse that you still believe in them. So yeah, yeah. I just. You know, we'll see how they play tonight. I, I don't have high hopes for tonight. I, I'm going to guess they come out flat, but you never know. We'll see. If you're Jerry Depoto and Scott Service and Justin Hollander, whoever, do you if if you do have something else up your sleeve here, do you tell the clubhouse that? Do you tell them like, hey, like, I, I know, don't think... I know, we just traded Paul, but like, we do have a plan here to to help you guys out. Like, do you think that's important that he that one of them say that? To the clubhouse to address that i don't know how much better it makes it but i don't think it makes it better and then if it falls apart and you don't pull that trigger you can't pull that trigger then like i don't think you gain much from from telling right. the players that and i don't think the players care honestly like in terms of like hey don't worry guys we're gonna go like let me explain we did this with kendall graveman and now we're gonna do it and it's right. like i don't think they care i think they just said you traded our, our like the heart and soul of our bullpen and one of our leaders like we don't care who you bring in yeah. So I don't think there's really any point in doing that. All right. Well, that's going to do it for our show. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Lockdown Mariners podcast. For Colby Patnode, I'm Tiny Gonzalez. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Mariners. You can follow me at Dane Gonzalez, that's D-A-N-E-G-N-Z-L-Z, and Colby at CPAT11, that's C-P-A-T-1-1. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok as well over at Locked On Mariners. That's one word, Locked On Mariners. You can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode. Thank you again for making us your first listen. Have yourself a beautiful baseball day, and we'll see you next time. Peace.